And what I thought I'd start by doing, so all of those whose first class this is, you'll be very glad to know I'm going to do this. I'm going to do a bit of a recap over the, from the previous classes. So most of you will recognise my diagram. So here we have the medium, stood on the platform. There we have an audience complete with bag of sweeties, like they often have. Here we have the spirit world up here. And so the medium has a link to a spirit communicator, a mediumistic link. And the medium also has a psychic link to a member of the audience, the recipient of the message. So we find our, our spirit communicator, we find out who we're going to, and we've got a link between the both of them. Uh, this all takes place within this wonderful substance we call the power. But anyone who's sharp will recognise there's an extra element in here, the bit shown in red, which is this bit here is all supervised by our guide. So because it's mechanics and mediumship, it's got an extra dimension to it to Nye. It's got the guide in the mix as well. So we always have the psychic link, the mediumistic link. It all takes place within the power. And mediumship is a, it's a mind-to-mind -mind thing. It's a consciousness thing. We say the spirit world is at a higher vi frequency of vibration. It's always there. It's always constant. It's all around us. We show it here, above us. Well, that's only just to show it's of higher vibration, but technically it is all around us. It's not up there, and there's nothing else specifically down there, just for those who are wondering. So, but it is all around us, but all we have to do is shift our awareness, shift our consciousness, increase our frequency of consciousness to link in to the spirit world. So we push our mind up to touch the, these up here. That's what we're trying to achieve with, when we're working with spirit. That's the process. So it's a, it's a mind to mind thing. That's the good news. And it's all about a blending as well. We're blending our mind with the mind of the spirit world. That's important as well. So we then get information from spirit. We then relay it to our audience. Hopefully our audience say, yes, I can take it. And we're all right. So that's basically what's happening in the process. And if we go back to the very first class we did, <coughs> So going back to the very first class we did, if we look at the flow from spirit, uh, the flow comes down from spirit through our superconscious mind, which is our higher self. And from spirit, it could either be a communicator or a guide, it doesn't matter. It then comes to our higher self, which is our superconscious mind, and then it moves down to our subconscious mind which is the bit we use for our psychic and intuition work, and then it comes finally down to our conscious mind, which is our rational mind, and that mind that likes to make sense of all the world. And as I mentioned in my very first class, men tend to focus more at this level here than women do. Women are much more psychic and intuitive as a general rule. Men tend to focus more in the rational mind. The subconscious mind is that mind that is able to multitask as well, and because women can access it a lot more, Say no more. That just explains why men struggle to multitask. And of course, mediumship is all about multitasking. We have to hold a link with spirit whilst talk to our audience at the same time and maintain both. So mediumship is all about multitasking. So I'm not going to go any further about the male-female aspect of it. <laughs> <laughs> so the key thing is, is if your mind ever comes back to analysing, trying to work out what's going on, trying to think about things, you come back down here. So you're trying to expand your consciousness to move up through the different levels to touch spirit. But as soon as you start thinking about it, straight back down to here. So we don't want to really be using our conscious mind during the process if we can avoid it. Which again is easier said than done because you do need to monitor what's coming through. And which part of your mind will monitor what's coming through? The conscious mind, the rational mind. So that bit has to almost just stay in a watching mode but a non-interference mode. So we need to know what's coming through, but predominantly we need to be working with our subconscious and allowing this to take a back seat and to stay. How do you do that? With practice. <laughs> you, yeah, you just learn to do it. But if you let this bit come in saying, oh, well, that's interesting, what's going on here then? Then this bit takes over from the subconscious mind and you tend to lose the link. So we need to make sure we don't do that. That's quite important. So we can imagine uh, the spirit world as a bunch of people at higher vibration, higher frequency, a higher wavelength, if you like, than we are. So if you imagine this is the earth world, this is increasing frequency up here. This is where we work with normally. This is the earth world. This is the spirit world at a much higher frequency. 
and there's a gap between it. So we shift our awareness. We're already working in here normally, but then we need to move our awareness up to become aware of the spirit world and aware of those individual consciousnesses within the spirit world. So, we're in, so we need to move from here to there. Now, because of, we can link it to rad, similar to radio waves as well, we can say that each medium has their own wavelength across which they work. Some of you may have short wave, long wave, medium wave, VHF, police channel. Uh, so some of you may have a huge range of frequencies across which you work. Other people may have a more limited range of frequencies. And when you first start, it's how far you can push yourself up here. So when you first start, you won't get as far probably as someone who's experienced. But even when you are highly experienced, some may be able to get here, others here. All, everyone would be able to get to a different level. Does that all make sense? Say, say I had an individual communicator right at the top of here. Only certain people who could actually get their energy up to that frequency would be able to communicate with them, to be able to form a link and blend with them. And if you could just get below it, but not quite to it, what happens when you don't quite tune a radio in properly? So you get static, you get a bit of interference, you might get another station coming in on it, giving you more information that you don't want. It's not quite right. Sometimes you can hear it clearly, and then it goes out again, and then sometimes it comes back in again. And it'd just be the same with your mediumship, really. You can't hold that link with the spirit as well as you would otherwise be able to do so. So, that, so I quite like the radio analogy. Last, the last class, we did look at the techniques you actually use to get from here to here. What empowers you to raise your vibration, to connect to spirit, and to hold that connection. And we'll look a little bit more about holding the connection later. Uh, I won't go through the different techniques again. I'm afraid that's mediumship class three. So let's look a little bit now at the, uh, the roles of the guides and the helpers. So, so here we are, we have our guide. He's a very happy guide, that one. That medium's obviously working well, because he's a very happy guide. He's watching the whole process. He's watching what's happening here. <laughs> so who here thinks they receive all of the information that they get from their guide? And who here thinks they get all the information they get from the individual spirit communicator? And who hasn't got a clue? That's everybody else then. <laughs> so in the, in the olden days, if we go back a little bit, in the olden days, it was believed that your guide was the middleman. Here you have a spirit communicator who told the guide or give the information to the guide. You made your, your mediumistic link with the guide and the guide gave the information to the medium. It's a bit like Chinese whispers, really. Mm -hmm. You know, tell him I'm tall. He's tall. <laughs> How tall? How tall? Mm. So you've got this middleman and that's your guide. Whereas very few mediums, some people still teach this, believe it or not. A few people still do teach that method. So for me, this is our more modern view of what's taking place. The medium connects directly to the spirit communicator. And the guide, he's there with an overseeing role. You can send your thoughts out to the guide, and the guide can send thoughts out to the spirit communicator, and vice versa. But the guide is effectively at the mix, to the side, allowing you to get on with it. And if there's a problem, the guide will interfere, but only if there's a problem. Otherwise, but you've got to ask the guide to interfere. The guide won't interfere without it. You've got to send your thoughts out. What's, go what's going on? What's going on? I can't make this work. And the guy's standing there saying, you're with the wrong person, you plank. But <laughs> you're not confirming your evidence. You just, you just let them say yes to you. So anyway, so your guide's there, probably tearing his hair out. Have you ever noticed why most guides seem to be Buddhist monks and seem to be bald? <laughs> I don't think they're Buddhist monks at all. I just think they've had their hair torn out from trying to work with a slot. So, you know, it's... Um, so, yeah, so this is where we believe it is now. We believe that we are linking as mediums to the spirit communicator and that the guide is not the intermediary. The guide is there to the side. And I also believe the guide knows how we work, or at least they should do. If we're doing a bit about sitting in the power, if we're allowing the spirit world to draw close to us and to learn how to work with us as we want to work with them by the process of meditating and sitting in the power, the guide will know quite a lot about us, about how our mediumship works, about how we function, about all our knowledge, all our memories. 